A new report from a US-based think tank claims authorities in China's northwest are forcing hundreds of thousands of ethnic minorities to work in the region's cotton fields. Xinjiang in China's northwest produces about 20% of the world's cotton, cotton that is potentially making its way into the manufacturing chains of major world retailers. Now, you'll probably remember Xinjiang from the numerous times we have reported on Chinese re-education camps where experts believe some one million ethnic Uyghur, Kazakh and other Muslim minorities have been interned as a counter-terrorism measure. Inmates who've been released have complained of torture, beatings and indoctrination in Chinese Communist Party thought. Here's more. Scenes of a family outing. Gulzira Awelhan, her husband Tursun Jan, and their little daughter Bayan are in Turkey, a safe location for now. But for Gulzira, a normal life is still far away. She says she does not feel safe anywhere. I still wake up from nightmares in which I see myself in a Chinese internment camp again. The images and memories of the interrogations, of the beatings, and the things they did to women there haunt me. I then feel sick for a few days and I can't sleep. I argue with my family. I even think about hurting myself. In 2017, Gozira Awalhan was arrested in Xinjiang, China's westernmost region. She is an ethnic Kazakh, born in China and was living in Kazakhstan at the time. On a trip back to China, she was detained by police and then held for a year in several re-education camps. They tortured us. They had cameras everywhere. You were not allowed to pause, scratch your head or cry. If they saw that, they would force you onto a metal chair. They would make you sit there for 12 hours, 24 hours. You were tied to the chair. And if you tried to move, it would get tighter. Then they make you repeat Chinese words that you didn't know. If you forgot them, they used an electroshock device on your head. Back in Kazakhstan, her family did not know where she was. At the same time, authorities in China suddenly started to detain large numbers of the region's Muslim minorities. The local government sought to portray the camps as vocational training centers. The training centers are not at all like some media have described them. Students are not mistreated, and their personal freedoms are not limited. These are schools that help improve people's personal qualities. I traveled to the region to look for myself. One of the camps Gozira was taken to was middle school number four of Gulja County. Satellite imagery shows how in 2018 a high wall was built around the school and huts were built in the courtyard. Today, the school is back to what it was. China has declared that all trainees had graduated, a claim that is hard to verify. Another facility where she was held sits just around the corner. It is officially called a vocational technical school. It was built in 2017. A high wall was later taken down and replaced with a fence. Its name is not found on educational websites. Official reports highlight that all trainees were farmers and herdsmen from surrounding villages. In this area, that means mostly ethnic minorities. It is impossible to know under what circumstances they attend the school. And while this does not look like a high security prison, the gates are closed. The young men walk quietly in lines before entering the building. They undergo a quick body check. I am stopped by my minders. You can't stick a foot with it. Gozira also told us that many of her former inmates were later transferred to regular prisons. On the outskirts of Gulja are two more facilities. There are now five policemen following me. A prison with watchtowers and another camp were both built in 2017 when the campaign against ethnic minorities took off. Stop, stop! If you film here, we will have to take measures against you. This place is a state secret. Gozira stayed more than a year in the camp, but even after she was officially released, her ordeal continued. On our way back, we pass an industrial complex. 
Ozira was sent to work here after her release. State TV showcases the factory as a model of successful poverty eradication. I'm getting free food and accommodation. It is very good. These videos are a show-off to the outside world. Their message is, our nation is good, people are being helped to make a living. But no one works there voluntarily. Many women inside cried a lot. There is no freedom. There are cameras everywhere. They threaten you. If you refuse to work here, you will go learning. We were working there because of fear. To go learning means being sent back to the camp. Gozira was told she was detained because she had been to Kazakhstan. That was seen as a sign of being disloyal to China. More and more observers are now calling what is happening in the region a genocide after reports of forced birth control, sterilization and abortions. In the camp, Gozira recalls, the inmates were administered injections of an unknown substance. After the injection, some women stopped having their periods. Those who still had it were given one pad. They had to use it for two or three days. If their period would come, it would come. If not, not. We stopped being ashamed about it. At some point, we even stopped thinking of home. Most of us had stopped crying by then. Gozira is one of the lucky ones. She was finally allowed to leave after her husband had campaigned for her in Kazakhstan. She has no news from her relatives in the region. And for more, I'm joined by Dolkun Issa. He's president of the World Uyghur Congress. Mr. Issa, China's actions in these re-education camps have been reported on and well-documented for many years now. Do you think the world has acted sufficiently against this? Well, uh, as you said, evidence of the Uyghur genocide is increasingly recognized uh, by the uh, wide public and uh, several of the report. But unfortunately, uh, yes, there is a, some international reaction, just speaking, talking. But we haven't seen any real action to stop this Uyghur genocide. It is the problem. So that's why we call them to the internationally, particularly Western governments, to establish investigation to ensure that appropriate legal determination regarding the natural and uh, illegal uh, atrocity. But uh, yes, we have seen only the US government uh, did some concrete action, some uh, sanction against the Chinese government, uh, high level official, Chinese Communist Party, high level official who has direct lead for the, this Uyghur genocide, forced labor, or this concentration camp. But uh, as so far, we haven't seen any concrete action from the particularly European countries or some other country. It is the problem. That's why Chinese government continue uh, continually and implement this uh, uh, atrocity and the genocide against Uyghurs. Now, earlier on, you said that uh, the genocide against the Uyghur people has been internationally recognized. Yet, despite that, the International Criminal Court has said it can't pursue a case against China for the internment of Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities. Do you think that legitimizes China's claims that these camps are just vocational training centers? Well, uh, ICT, International Criminal Court, yes, this is a very disappointed decision, uh, very pity decision, but this is a process of the International Court, legal process. China uh, is not a member of the International Court. This is the reason. So, so we can understand this, but other international uh, body, international organizations should be take action, uh, politically and legal action. So that's why... Uh, there is a one. Uh, there is a only option. This public, uh, independent uh, people's tribunal will be accountable with China. So no. And uh, September, uh, beginning of the September this year, uh, Uyghur tribunal uh, was established in London. Uh, international lawyer uh, Jeffrey Nice he set up the uh, independent people's tribunal. So we hope. Uh, this is the only way, no, that independent tribunal can uh, take the accountable of Chinese uh, atrocity uh, uh, against Uyghurs.
Meanwhile, there are also uh, now new revelations that ethnic minorities in Xinjiang are being forced into picking cotton in the region and cotton that is making its way into global supply chains. Is this something that requires action from the international community? Yeah, sure. This is, uh, this is the, uh, the link between modern-day slavery and the genocide system cannot be separately. This is the one of the, uh, the uh, evidence of the, what is the Chinese government doing genocide. Today, and the hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs uh, use the forced labor. Uh, in so many Western companies continue to use the Uyghurs uh, and the uh, det Uyghur detainer to use the forced labor and the cheap labor, modern slavery. So that's why we call the whole the government and the particular Western government and the company should not be support, should not be uh, support the Chinese uh, uh, this uh, crime against the humanity genocide uh, genocide. So, but uh, so far, so many Western company continue make business. It is not correct time to business as usual. So that's why uh, the company should be stop the business with China and they should to stop the uh, use of forced labor of the Uyghur. Uh, so uh, it, it, it is the only way to stop China. Dolko Nisa, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. I thank you for having me. And joining me now is Matthias Bollinger, who you heard from in that report. In fact, Matthias, you've just returned from the region. What were your impressions? It's very difficult to work in that region. You are trailed all the time by plain coast police. In some cities, they would just uh, follow you at a distance and interfere, as we have seen also in this report, uh, when you approach a, a site that they don't want to see you. In other places, they will really follow you like very closely, like standing right next to you, watching your phone all the time, preventing you from even filming innocent scenes on the street. Um, so it's very difficult when you uh, talk to somebody, they will also talk to these people. At one point, I, a man on the street saw me filming and he waved at me and, 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 and showed a Chinese flag and said that he was a patriot and then asked me inside his shop, a small restaurant. And um, when I left this shop, the police immediately went in and asked him what he had been uh, telling me. So very much uh, signs that the message is being controlled. Also, the movement is being controlled. Um, we, we saw a family in your piece who is now in Turkey. How unusual is that for people to be able to leave? There are about uh, 12 million ethnic minorities, Muslim ethnic minorities in the region, mostly Uyghurs and Kazakhs, and uh, very few of them have been able to leave the region, especially in the past three years since the campaign started. Their passports have been confiscated. Uh, there are about um, a few dozen people who have been to the camps who are now abroad. Very few of them talk to Western media because they have relatives abroad and they fear uh, that their relatives might uh, uh, endure repercussions if they talk to the media. Um, so most of those who have been able to leave the country are people like Gulzira who uh, had family in Kazakhstan and whose family had campaigned for her. Meantime, We've heard the International Criminal Court will not take up the case over the treatment of Uyghurs because China is not a signatory. Um, but the pressure is growing on Beijing. How is it affecting policy in the country? It's very hard to say how it's affecting policy. It is affecting, let's say, uh, public relations work of Beijing. In the beginning, they denied that the camp existed at all. Then they called them vocational training centers. They have also closed some or desecuritized others, so they look more like schools, like what they are saying they are. But it's very hard to uh, uh, conclude from that, or we cannot conclude from that, that the oppression against the minorities is over. We still hear a lot of reports about uh, repression. We see, well, while, while some of the camps have been closed, we see prisons have been expanded. Matthias Bollinger reporting from China. Thank you so much for bringing us that report.